when you get to manuscripts that do not have Mach 6923, Greek, Greek mm -hmm. manuscripts that don't have Mach 6920, you know how big that, how big that list is? I do know, actually. I was going to say it's going to be three manuscripts, and two two of them are old, but one is not, right? Uh, relatively speaking. On my blog, uh, thetextofthegospels.com, uh, I, I mention with, uh, with links to see it, ma manuscript of 304 is technically a commentary manuscript. It, it's the text of Mark is given, and then there's a commentary on that, that section, and then there's some, then, then another verse segment is given, and then there's commentary, and that's the way it works through. In that commentary manuscript called 304, it, it ends its text at Mark 16.8, and then there's some more commentary after that, and then, then it just kind of stops. There's, there's no, and here ends the Gospel of Mark. It, it's, it's just, there's a, if, if you go to my blog, you can see the details of it. Uh, yeah, D does it does it end at the end of the page like that section as if there should have been another page and it was missing? I think Jonathan Borland is taking a closer look at it. He's he, he's the one to I think uh, look into more de more details. But I have put some details on there. There's a there's a little poem at the end of the at the end of the last page that, that goes to to the to the tune of uh, as a traveler sees his homeland, so it is when a scribe comes to the end of the book, and that's what that's the last thing you have. Uh, Gotcha. It, it's even kind of repeated. Somebody else comes along and, and repeats the same line. So, so instead of ending with a, and here is where the book of Mark, is what you usually have in a continuous text manuscript, you have this, this little scrawl at the end. And so 304 is somewhat questioned as to whether it should be counted. First, it's not really a copy of, of, of Mark. It's a copy that was made to preserve the text with the commentary that it's commentarying about. But uh, but three or four go, goes on the goes in that stack, even though it's from the 1100s. But because its text itself is primarily Byzantine, the the uh, what what some folks suspect is that there's a little bit more to the story that we haven't quite right read. right. It doesn't make sense that it would be the only Byzantine type manuscript without the long ending of Mark. Because there's, there's really nothing special about it. <clears throat> yeah, that is the last one. One, one. one idea is maybe it's the first part of what originally was a two volume set and the second second volume containing comments on Luke, Luke and John uh, has not survived. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess at this point, that's all speculation, right? We just know that it looks like manuscript 304 stops rather abruptly uh, when it looks like it should continue, but it appears to just, that's it. Um, yeah. uh, another possibility is possibly they didn't have any more comments about it. Well, well, we don't have any more comments about this particular section, so we'll just stop. Oh, but that that would got to be the most amazing piece of passage to comment on, right? You know, handling poison and snakes and all that good stuff, right? I think that there would be some, some yeah. more involved, but but uh, scribes didn't always think the way we think. So sometimes they did things that said, well, if that's all we got, that's all we got. On to the next book. Or maybe it was dinner time and they just had to go and never came back. But, but I don't want to lose track of uh, those two manuscripts that are old. The, the two that really are the ones that make the difference. Three, three or four is kind of, kind of a quirk. When it comes to the manuscripts that make the difference, the ones that even if we didn't have three or four, uh, copies which uh, textual analysts would, would turn to, to these two instead. But here we see uh, there on the left, uh, we see Codex B. This is Codex Vaticanus. Codex Vaticanus dates from about the year 325, and we don't know exactly where it was made, but uh, but uh, we, we we do see a, a coronis in in, in in Vaticanus that has some similarity with uh, the the coronis, the, the 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 little decorative marks that some, that the copyists would put at the end of the books. That's what a coronis is. We see the same kind of coronis being used in Vaticanus. Uh, we see it appears sometimes in in Sinaiticus. So, so there's some kind of a historical relationship between the two. Also, right. in, in Acts, in the book of Acts, we see in the margin the, the same form of the numbering pattern, as they didn't have what, what we know as the chapters and verses, but they had uh, what was called the Euthalia apparatus. And right. they have the same forms of numbers, but when they, when they get a little weird, they get weird in the same way. It's, it's kind of a unique feature that, that Vaticanus and Sinaiticus share. Right. So, so they're kind of connected historically. 
So there was some talk about Vaticanus and Sinatic, Sinaticus being one of the, or maybe two of the 50, the, the great 50 order from, uh, was it Augustine? Um, who commissioned that 50 Bibles would be created in threefold or fourfold form? Constantine. Constantine, yes. According to Eusebius, uh, we, have to, we have to trust Eusebius for, for this. Yeah. He, he's the one that hands down the information. But he says that uh, Constantine, when, when the city of Constantinople was, was developing, needed Bibles for the churches. And so he finances or offers to Eusebius that, that, or Eusebius that, he, that he will finance the production of 50 copies of the scriptures. Now, mm -hmm. copies of scriptures could mean different things to different people. We, we would, would think of it as, oh, there's a full Bible. But not necessarily. It could be something less right so you're thinking like maybe it was just the gospels or maybe it was paul's epistles or something like that I'm thinking maybe it was just the gospels now right can, can i can i prove it uh no i can't but there's some some basis for saying that it is not uh what we think of as vaticanus and as not it kind of elicits a ooh vector this one this one is one that constantine uh or, Right, right. Or, or authorized. In, in Codex Sinaiticus and in, and in Codex Vaticanus, in Matthew 27, 49, there's a reading that is, it's an, it's an erroneous reading. It says that Jesus was stabbed with a, with, a, with a spear and then he died. So it's an error in the text. Right. It's not just in, in these two manuscripts. It's also in some other manuscripts. He even made it as far as, far as Ireland. But but that oh. particular reading is is noted by, by later writers who, who 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 brought it up and they said well well we all know that that the Eusebius in his canons did not include this this reading so it wasn't in the text in the text used by Eusebius but the canons uh, and we'll, we'll probably get a chance to revisit this subject in a, in a minute mm -hmm. but Eusebius had made a way a a way to uh, to cross reference the the parallel passages in the Gospels. To, right. To, uh, to, he made a little a, a, a chart, with, which uh, is, is in a lot of manuscripts. The, the, the Eusebian canons, uh, it gave the scribes something to uh, to expand upon, to 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 creatively develop instead of just being machines copying out text. They, they could add artwork to them. They could add flourishes. And some of the Latin manuscripts and some of the Armenian manuscripts, they go quite ornate. But right. The, but the point of the Eusebian canons was to show where the parallel passages were, and and so there would be. A, a, a list of where all four gospels say something about the passage, uh, or, or all, all, all by passage I mean a, a scene, an, an episode. Where three of the four gospels have something to say, where a different three or four have something to say. Excuse me, where a different three have something to say. Where, then on down, it would, it would work, work, work its way down to where where two of them have something to say, and then the last or the tenth uh, Eusebian canon list would would be where. Each where one of them has something to say. Well, that that reading in Matthew twenty seven forty nine is not listed in the Eusebian canons in in any of the lists. So the okay. is that it was not in Eusebius's text. Right. So Eusebius didn't know about it, and Eusebius, being the church historian that he is, if there was a reading he had known about, he would have put it into his own writings. That's the implication. Yeah. Also, also there's some other things as well. There's an interesting reading in in, in Luke. Uh, 24, 13. But that might be getting into the weeds to get too far away. To, to, yeah, to yeah. Vaticanus, uh, to focus on this, this this page that we see before us, there on the left you see uh, Codex Vaticanus a, as it exists, uh, with this blank space after Mark 16, verse 8. Uh, then that middle column, uh, that's the end of Mark 16, 8, with the, with the closing title. Uh, that's what you usually have. That's what we don't see in 304, but but usually a manuscript that's continuous, a continuous text manuscript, we, we see it. And so you right. see, Mark on. It wasn't entirely uncommon either for um, scribes to put the title of the book at the end uh, of the book in addition to the beginning. So when you finished reading through one of the Gospels, you would see the title at the end. Uh, whether it's Kata Marcon or Kata Ioannin or Kata uh, Lucan, it always appeared at the end. Well, not, maybe not always, but a, a great deal of times it appeared at the end of the book instead of the beginning. But here we see um, this this big blank space. And the, the question, of course, obviously comes, why did the copyist leave this blank space? Well, well, some copyists, they just leave space between books and it's no big deal. But that's not the case, though, in, in, in Codex Vaticanus. Now, in Sinaiticus, there's... Plenty of filler space. Filler space is not unusual in Sinaiticus. 
But right. if you tell us about a Canis, it's a different story, a very different story. Mm -hmm. In the Old Testament, there were some blank spaces left, I think three. But in each case, you can see very clearly, uh, contrary to the claims that Dan Wallace has made about this, on the subject, you can see very clearly that each one of those blank spaces was elicited by a factor involved in the production of the manuscript. When one copyist work met another copyist work, when pages that were written in three columns per, per page met thick books where the, where the lines on the page were just two columns per page, and finally, at the very end of Daniel itself, of course, you would have Matthew begin on a, on a fresh folio. So, so it's not hard at all to see the mechanisms that, that caused those blank spaces in, 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 in the Old Testament. But here, between Matthew and Luke, we have this unique, distinct, one-of-a-kind blank column. It's intentionally right. left. And so that elicits the question, why is this blank column here? Right, and it's not like there would be a scribe who would be writing the Gospel of Mark and then a second scribe who would be starting in Luke. So um, based on the handwriting, it looks like Mark and Luke are completed by the same scribe. Um, so this isn't this wouldn't be a factor for leaving that space blank. They, they really, like even in looking that, um, you would think that Luke would just start in the third column with Catalucan on the top and then, you know, the letters going, but we don't, we don't see that at all. And that's really strange for this manuscript. So could, could, a, could a scribe uh, put Mark 16, 9 through 20 into that blank space? And, and uh, I think some copyists, have, uh, excuse me, some, some commentators have said, oh no, there's not nearly enough blank space there. But, but here I have, uh, as you can see in, in, this, in the slide, I have taken letters uh, digitally uh, from the same page, so, so not my lettering, but using the scribe's own lettering, and and uh, letter by letter uh, recreated the text of Mark sixteen nine to twenty in the blank space right after the end of Mark sixteen eight. So let so let me get this straight. You you copied and pasted from the man from an image of the manuscript each letter, and you put them in place on that empty column to see if they would fit. Uh, yes, yes. How long did that take you? That must have taken an incredible amount of time. Oh, I, it wasn't that long. Uh, I, I don't recall exactly. But, uh, but as you can see, I've, I've compacted the letters very slightly, but, uh, but copyists knew how to do that. We see the scribe of uh, Codex Sinaiticus doing that exact same thing, uh, much, more much more drastically than I have. Uh, but, but here on, on the page, you can see the text of Mark 16, 9 through 20, uh, e even with the little uh, closing title there at the end, uh, fitting onto the page without much of a problem. Wow. So, so it, now, now it, it didn't have to fit. Copies could leave what was called memorial space, memorial space. And, and that was when, when a copyist using a master copy or, or an exemplar, uh, that was his basis for what he was doing. And he would sometimes you know, copy the, t the text that he was assigned to copy. But he would sometimes remember, wait a second, I remember more being here, and if, if his memory was distinct, he would leave a blank space for that for kind of a in a memorial of his recollection. We see that, for instance, in in Codex L, where where the story of the woman caught in adultery is not in the text, but the copyist uh, recollected that, that there was something there, and so he left a blank space for it. Now that blank space isn't nearly enough to to fit the passage unless you write really 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 tiny. But, but just, the, just the act of leaving a blank space was enough to get the idea across. Are, is there any evidence somewhere, like maybe a historian somewhere had written down this practice of memorial space? This, this is new to me, right? So, like, is there any evidence somewhere that would suggest that this was a regular thing that scribes did? Or are we just sort of using the empty space to say, hey, this is a memorial space? Like, how, how do we come to that conclusion? I don't think there's a, <clears throat> a, a record of any scribe saying, here is why we did what we did our custom with, with the memorial space. It, it's mostly a deduction drawn from the evidence that when we see Codex Delta and there's a blank space exactly where we know of a te large textual variant, uh, that, that's the logical deduction to make. Okay, I see. So it's, it's just a pattern that we see in the manuscripts. And so um, as a sort of way of describing this, we have ascribed it the title of memorial space. Yes, yes. Gotcha. Okay, perfect. But also, also, uh, the, the, not, not only, so, so not only do we have uh, Codex Vaticanus with this memorial space, this large blank space, 
And not only is that blank space relatively sufficient for, for the inclusion of Mark 16, 19, 20, but also in Codex Sinaiticus, we also see another anomalous treatment of the text. In Codex Sinaiticus being the other, in, in which Mark ends at, at chapter 16, verse 8. So, so aside from manuscript 304, Vaticanus and Sinaiticus are the only other two entire Greek manuscripts that don't have the long ending of Mark in it. Uh, yes, I don't know why. I have my suspicions, but I don't really know why uh, some commentators seem to have trouble counting the manuscripts because most people can count to three. But usually, when they describe the manuscript evidence, it's uh, oh, we 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 don't count them. We don't count them because right. if they did count them and say to people, we're relying on just two, two. Because, because three or four really isn't weighty. Uh, they're really counting on Vaticanus and Sinaiticus here because they're the chief Alexandrian representatives. Right. They're rejecting all the rest. They're rejecting A, D, E, W, and on down the list of 1,600 manuscripts. But, but, it, but I think that maybe if they were, were candid about how many manuscripts they're relying on, they, they realize they won't convince as many people. And that's why the footnotes are phrased the way they're phrased. Instead of giving specifics of three versus 1,600, say, oh, but we don't count them. So they don't count them, and they make sure they don't count them. So they just say, well, some have this, and others have that. We won't worry right. details like three versus 1,600. Right, and, and this comes down to those marginal notes in our, in our Bible translations, right? And they'll say... Uh, you know, the oldest and best manuscripts don't contain, uh, you know, such and such a passage. Yes, uh, uh, but what the message says today, you know, yeah. only, only light ones. Well, well, Codex Alexandrinus is not late. Codex D no. is not late. Codex W is not late. No. That, 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 the note is simply erroneous. Yeah, I mean, I guess you could consider it late compared to a manuscript that's slightly earlier <laughs> but yeah but all stretches of the, of the imagination those those manuscripts you just named there they they are much earlier than the minuscules that we see in the ninth and 10th century right so yes yes, yes. Like, like i said codex, codex <clears throat> comes from about 325 codex mm -hmm. sinaticus probably a little bit later probably around 350 yep. but let's take a closer look at sinaticus let's uh, bring it up again the codex yeah. sinaticus at the end of mark it does not have the pages that were made by the scribe who made the pages that come before it and the pages that come <clears> after it. It has what's called a cancel sheet. The person that wrote the, page, the, the text on these four pages, and you should maybe picture the four pages as, picture like the, 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 the four pages of, of a church bulletin, folded, folded in half. But in, on, these, on these pages, um, what has happened is the, the main scribe made some kind of mistake so terrible that the person who was supervising him said, this won't do. I'm sorry. We're, we're going to have to redo these four pages. And in the process of redoing those four pages, there was a challenge. The challenge was how to, how to include the, the text that the main copyist had accidentally left out. Right. So that meant that the, the proofreader then had to come in and correct his mistake. Which, it's, if you make a few deductions from the work of the corrector, that meant that he had to include text in Luke that had been left out by the main scribe. Because when we look <clears> at the text <throat> in Luke, we see the text is written very unusually. Right. Now, now, the, now you can see, uh, you, you can go to the codexsynaticus.org website and see these pages and do this counting yourself if you want to. Uh, but but uh, but at this at this page, this is the page that has the the ending of the Gospel of Mark, and, and again, Codex uh, Sinaiticus org, they have a uh, clearer images there. Right, and I guess the, you know just just a kind of uh, something I've noticed here uh, between this one and Vaticanus is you see that um, Sinaiticus here uh, has the title at the end there, um, Catamarchon. Uh, it doesn't say Catomar, I can't quite see it. Um, but you see that the very next column starts the next book. Um, but in, in Vaticanus, we see that there was that large blank space left there. Well, as you, as you can see in the, in the, in the small list of, of numbers per column, um, the, 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 the corrector, when he made these pages, again, this isn't the main, the main copyist, this is the corrector, the, the diathotes. Uh, when he makes these, these pages, uh, we, we don't have videotape, 
But making a few deductions, it looks like he began with the text of Luke. He knew that he had to do the end of Mark 2, but he started with the text of Luke because that was where the real challenge was to make the last page of the, the last column or the last page of, of the, this folio uh, interlock smoothly with the next page on, 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 the, next, on the next folio. Right. So to like kind of you know, cover the error so that whoever paid for this manuscript isn't going to see a large mistake in there, right? Yeah. But, yeah. but to do that, he had to make very, very compacted text because the previous scribe had left out text. He needs to put in the text that the previous scribe had left out, but he needs to do it in the same number of columns. Mm. So he's right. got his work cut out for him. So after he does that for, for Luke, and if you just look at Luke, you can see that the, the, each column is very, very much more compacted than, than the normal copyist would make. Right, but right. After he's, after he's finished Luke, then he goes back to Mark, and, and he, can, he, can, he can relax. So the, the, the hard work is, is done. But for some reason, and again, we, 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 we keep, don't have him to ask, but for some reason, in column four, he resumes, maybe, maybe he just got, got used to copying this, this compactly, but, but for some reason, in, in, the, in the fourth column, uh, he gets used to copying compactly again. He, got, he has uh, about more than, more, more than 700 uh, letters in that column. Okay. Then, then he gets back to normal. He, he, like he, he pauses, he, he turns the page, and he realizes what he's done. Now he needs to undo it. So he gets back mm -hmm. to his normal rate, maybe a little bit under that. But at the end of uh, column eight, he skips some text accidentally. Not, not, this is the corrector making the mistake. He, sk he skipped quite a mark 16.1. And right. so now the calculations that he's made won't come out quite right. Now he's still going to come short no matter, no matter what he does. So when we get to column eight, he really stretches out his lettering. We, we have uh, 552 uh, letters in that column. His normal rate was significantly more than that, like, like, like 600, more, more than 600, 630 or so. Right. But, but now what he's doing, what he's trying to do is he realizes that he, if he keeps on writing normally, he'll reach the end of that column and still have a blank column between Mark and Luke. It implies that this copyist is aware of a textual variant here, is, is aware of, but, but he wants to go farther than, than what the scribe of Vaticanus does. He doesn't want to leave a blank column. And so instead of leaving a blank column, <clears throat> he deliberately stretches out his lettering. He even uncontracts the name of Jesus and writes Jesus in full, which copyists hardly ever do. Right, right. And so he ends up with 37 letters left to fit at the top of the, the, the 10th column. And thus he can end the text of Mark without leaving a fully blank column. We see the implication that he's aware of verses 9 through 20. Right, So, so right. That's, that's what the copies, uh, excuse me, that, that's what commentators are leaning on. That, that's what the footnote makers, that's, this is what they're leaning on as far as the Greek manuscripts are concerned. When, when they say, you know, the, the best manuscripts, the, these two manuscripts, they clearly have significant quirks at the end of Mark. In both right. Vaticanus, and in Sinaiticus. And if we want so, to look closer, we can look and see that, that uh, the, uh, the closing title of Codex Sinaiticus at the end of Mark and the closing uh, Coronis is, <clears> is <throat> exceptionally emphatic. It's, it's, like, right. it's like, 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 like the copies wanted to make a fence here. Like, don't even think about adding, I don't know what you think about adding. <laughs> right, right. So, so with Codex Sinaiticus and Vatican as being our only, uh, our only Greek witnesses, really, 304 doesn't count. Uh, because it's just odd in many other ways. Um, so Vaticanus and, and uh, Sinaiticus being the only manuscripts that don't contain the long ending in Greek. Why is there this like importance? On, like, are, are these are these like others have suggested that the two most important manuscripts that that are currently available in Greek would you would you give them the same level of importance that is typically give, given to them in textual critic communities? I would not. They're, they're good representatives, especially Vaticanus. Now, in, in Sinaiticus, I think that there were some factors in play when this production that would, weren't normal. I think you have a, a case of one copyist just trying to make the text, but knowing that he's going to be proofread, and he's hoping that the, the proofreader will clean up anything that, 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 that's too bad. But in Vaticanus, Vaticanus is simply a much better made manuscript. 
Yeah, I mean, just just looking at the two, you can see that Vatican Vaticanus is just more symmetrical. It's more like the the letters are formed nicely. Just just generally by looking, I, I like I can't put an objective reason on it, but just subjectively looking at it, it just looks prettier. The, the, it's one of the things that in in Sinaiticus is the spelling. It's like not not, not all the scribes, not not not, not the corrector, but the main scribe. If there was a way to misspell a word, you would find it. <laughs> and, and, and you can look, look and, and uh, don't take my word for it. Look, look at look at Milan and Ski. Look, look at how they just rip into the poor guy and, and talk about how it's it defies description. How right. how inconsistent inconsistent this guy's or, or, orthography was. But, uh, but uh, that, that's getting into a larger question about the, the quality of, of Codex Codex and Codex Vaticanus. I would say, uh, for the purposes of, of the Gospels, the text in Codex Sinaiticus is much better and better better written than the text of Codex Sinaiticus. Um, right. as, as representatives of the Alexandrian text, uh, Sinaiticus is way overrated. 